there's going to be, but just things that I lived by during my training that I thought might help you out. And welcome back to the channel. You join us here on the top of Rygate Hill viewpoint. Uh, the sun is quite low in the sky today. And it is a freezing cold winter's day. But yeah, I've got a really fun video coming up today because yeah, I guess I've just gone through 6,000 kilometers run for the year of my training. So I just wanted to have a chat about some little tips and tricks and things that I do in sort of my day-to-day -day training that kind of allows me to get out and run quite a colossal distance each year. Let's go and get warmed up, get the uh, get us, get some supplies on board, and yeah, we'll see you out on the run. Right, guys, we are off, and we're already struggling in the mud and stuff. The weather in the last few days in the UK has been absolutely atrocious. We're blessed with a little bit of sunshine today. But yeah, it's gonna be a very slippy, very wet, very muddy run. So taking it nice and easy, but well done if you've been out running in the last few days in the UK. It's absolutely atrocious, <laughs> not much fun. But still, we've got some sunshine, so happy about that. Right, we'll see you in a bit. Right guys, so yeah, I've got a, a few points. I've scribbled down some notes. I don't know how many there's going to be, but just things that I lived by during my training that I thought might help you out. But yeah, how nice is it to be out on the North Downs Way again? You can't see my running 100 miles on the North Downs Way, but yeah, then check it out. I'll link it down below. So yeah, the first thing that I really try and focus on is that sort of little and often strength work we try and do in getting bits and pieces done at home. So I've had a gym membership. I've joined gyms and left gyms more often than I've had hot dinners. But it doesn't work for me. That doesn't mean gyms don't work. Of course they do. If you like going to the gym, go to the gym. I'm really not saying don't. But yeah, for me, oh, going the wrong way again. For me, it's all about little offering strength. So doing stuff at home, get, get a few weights, get some benches. Spend, spend about £100 buying a few little bits and pieces on Amazon. Again, I'll link those bits down below. And that sort of keeps the injuries at bay, pretty much. And it seems to me to get away, get away with it. I don't know, but it's just little and often, about two, three times a week at home on my easy run days. I would say if you are having rest days, then have those as complete rest days and do your strength work on your easy run days. So the second point I'd say is listening to your body. Again, you've probably heard that expression before, but for me, people often ask like, oh, you're running all the time. You're never taking rest days and things. Well, I do take quite, oh, this mud and water everywhere. I do take quite a few rest days, but I take those rest days when I feel I need to. I never really plan them in, but if I feel like, oh, this is getting a little bit much, I'm a little bit tired, I'm a little bit, feel like something's not quite right, then I'll take a rest day. So I never plan them in, just take them as and when I feel I need to. And if something does go wrong, I stop straight away. If I've got a niggle, I stop and I get in touch with Scott, my physio, and book an appointment. I really don't go on the computer to asking Dr. Google what things are, go and get some professional advice. If it's just tightness and things, then I book in a massage and get that done. I know those things are expensive, but they keep me running. So the next point I say is all around diet. Now, yes, yeah, I'm uh, long-term followers of the channel will know that I do live 99.9% .9 a plant-based sort of vegan diet, but I'll be the first to say that won't work for everybody. All our bodies are different. But what I really do advocate is getting some blood tests done every now and then and make sure however you are choosing to fuel your body is healthy. And the only way you can really do that is by getting some blood tests done, checking you're getting all the the vital vitamins and nutrients and minerals into your body to fuel it. We put our bodies through so much stress in training. 
and yeah getting some blood tests on is really good and when it comes to your diet whatever sort of diet you're choosing to follow just try and have as much unprocessed food in there as you possibly can so for me thank you for me you probably see chewing a few of the videos me and Sarah do eat out every now and then and it's not always the best but for the most part when we're at home it's we're always cooking from scratch we take the time to cook batches supper and there's the same thing for lunch the next day all as much unprocessed as we can and you can say oh fair enough you work from home it's easy to get that done I know it is but it's one of those things that really allows me to keep the body strong and feel properly. Okay, so the next subject I want to talk about is a tricky one because it's one I really hate talking about on the channel. And that's all to do with weight and weight loss. And yeah, a lot of us, not myself personally, but a lot of us got into running to lose weight as a way of becoming a healthier person. And the trouble is when that's the case, we can get in the point of thinking that skinnier and the lighter and the lower the number on the scales the better we're going to be but it's really really not true people get into very difficult really sad sad situations we've seen recently with the whole Mary Kane thing and how Salazar was treating her and this sort of myth that and I really think it is a myth I know of course there's some correlation to the lighter you are the faster you run of course there is but it's a very weak link in my experience. And for me, I'm always trying to keep my weight up. I'm always trying to, um, yeah, just keep in the healthy guidelines for what the NHS will say is a healthy place to be on the BMI index. I'm not obsessed about my weight in any way. I keep track of it every now and then, just step on the scales. Don't even always look what they say. I just get, it all gets recorded on Garmin and just check in every couple of months or so just to see where we're at and I know by looking in the mirror that I'm in a healthy place at the moment so it's far far easier said than done but really try not to think about the weight that you are try and maintain a healthy level not looking at skinny fitness gym people on the internet I really appreciate this it's not an easy subject to talk about it's very controversial but for me I've always want to keep my weight up and I'm never going to talk about my weight because I don't want people to compare themselves but that's always another bad thing looking on the internet and saying oh look at that person he weighs 60 kilos if I weigh 60 kilos I could run that time absolutely rubbish we're all different bodies we're all, we're all different people you can only really compare yourself to yourself Okay, right so the next point I want to talk about is footwear and make sure you get fitted and you've got appropriate footwear on for the running that you're doing. And I get a lot of people messaging me all the time saying, what shoe are you running in? And this, that and the other and they think that, oh, I'll just go out and buy that shoe and then I can do a similar sort of thing. And I really love the fact that people are asking me those questions. It's great. I'll happily acknowledge, but whenever I reply to people asking me about my footwear, I always say to go and get go down to a proper shop and get measured and make sure that that's the right foot you've got the right foot for that footwear basically so many people just go online and just order whatever the influence influencers out there are saying to buy and run into all sorts of problems with injuries down the line because that foot, their foot isn't suited for that shoe so yeah very simple Go and get yourself to a proper running shop, chat to them about what you're doing, chat to them about your schedule, your training, how much mileage you're doing. Maybe you want two shoes to rotate them, they'll last a bit longer, and things like that. Get to know the people in your local running store. Then, yeah, maybe the second time, third time, the good prices come up online, you know what you like in that brand, and yeah, you can take advantage of those deals. But for the first time, I really recommend getting out to your local store. Right, guys, the next thing to talk about. It's something you've probably heard me talk about loads, and that's easy running. We've talked about that a hell of a lot on the channel. Uh, so yeah, very low heart rate. Get the heart rate monitor on, 
sub 150 for your easy runs, sub 145 for the recoveries. There's a very general rule. Of course, if you've got time to calculate your personal zones, then do that. But what I'd add on to that is adding strides after your easy runs as well. So I link down below to a video I've got on strides, well, part of a video I've got on strides, and putting them after your easy runs, it really helps promote good form. And working on good form means you're moving across the ground well, which means you're not really lessen the chance of getting injured by quite a lot, as is doing hill repeats. So yeah, easy runs, strides, hill repeats, all working on good form and move across the work ground well. <laughs> just having a little breather and that kind of brings you on to the second last thing for this video and that is the best recovery out there now i know i'll talk about all the recovery tools my compex my ferro gun my uh, r8 roller and all of those sorts of things and getting massages but sleep really is and i know i talk about it all the time but it's so so true the best Thing you can be doing to recover out there it's something i prioritize so so much in my day-to-day -day life and trying to get to bed early and getting a good night's sleep invested money in a really good mattress good pillow blackout blinds and things like that and for me it's just so important for getting up the next day and feeling fresh so as much as you can in life prioritizing your sleep really will help so so much right guys this week finish up this lovely run with these amazing views on the North Downs. My final point would be do your best just to have fun out there. Remember we're all human, we're dealing with a human body. It's a living thing and there'll be ups and downs, highs and lows. You'll have amazing days out there and you'll have rubbish days. Some days you go out it just won't work and some days you go out and you'll feel a million dollars and that's kind of it you just got to do your best just to put a smile on your face and when it is working injury free skipping along like i am today and just think of those positive moments of course there's no way of really remaining completely injury free everyone's going to have niggles and plenty of ups and downs as i say but have fun enjoy it don't take life or running too seriously and have a laugh right We'll see you back at the car. So Sarah, have you enjoyed your run today? How have I, or have I? Have you enjoyed your run today? Yes, very much. Do you love making YouTube videos? I love making YouTube videos. See, Sarah really does. <laughs> She's happy all the time. Right guys, so we're back at the car. Sarah's just grabbing uh, some soy hot chocolates to warm up because it's very cold. Even though I've had my short shorts out. Uh, yeah, just try to warm up now, get in the car, get back to London. But yeah, if you are anywhere in the southeast, this is a really good spot This because you've got free parking here, cafe for when you start and when you finish, and uh, nice views in the summer. And yeah, the North Downs Way 100 sort of checkpoint is just here, which is really cool in the summer to come down and support the runners. And yeah, if you're on the trains, the Rygate's just down the hill here and Red Hill's just over there. So pretty, pretty easy to go to London. Right, but yeah, hopefully there are some pointers there to help you out in your own running, staying, trying to stay injury free and just having fun with your running and on foot to an amazing 2020. Let me know what your goals are. Are you setting some goals for 2020? Let me know down below. And yeah, we can have a chat all about what's going on in each other's running worlds. And that's what it's all about, making a community and all being together. Right, I'm gonna stop waffling now and get back into London. And yeah, we'll be back in a few days for a new video because Sarah, we're going ice skating. So much fun, she can't, cannot wait. So thanks for following guys, thanks to the patrons, everyone buying hats and things for Christmas. A few days to get your last few hats. Even though it's very cold, I've got my woolly hat on today, but we have got some woolly hats coming on the site soon as well. So yeah, as usual guys, thank you for all the support and the patrons and people, yeah, plans and everything for 2020. And... Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> I'm gonna have my hot chocolate. And no, Sarah, did I get back, take it back? What? We'll see you. <laughs> In the next one! <laughs>